This video will be uh, part two of construction of this little clock and GPS system. In the first video, the clock was constructed. There's two printed circuit boards. The only soldering on this board, which is the LCD display, was this 16 pin header here. The only soldering on this board was what you see here. Uh, two capacitors, that's these fellows. Uh, two push buttons, that's what you see here. The 16-pin uh, header here. A potentiometer and a crystal and the socket. And the last thing I did was put in this header here. Now these four pins, GPS receiver board, and these will do, connect to some remote push buttons and the power supply and we'll see what else when we get to, to assemble the, or when we get to mate these two boards together electrically. So in the first video this whole thing came from QRP Labs and the website is qrp-labs.com It looks as if we'll have some more many more in fact pieces to install. Now these are all through hole pieces the one surface mount device is already mounted. These instructions I downloaded from QRP Labs site and it talks about some things. <laughs> the surface mount component is a, a packaged uh, GPS receiver. I would imagine we're going to use every bit of this when you look at it, there aren't that many components spread out on the receiver board. These resistors and these resistors are on a feed, feed strip designed for a pick and place machine. So I know that these are all the same value and I measured it with my bench meter, 470. I did the same thing with these three and it's, they're 1K. So I marked them. The other components, and there is another resistor, I'm not going to uh, bother measuring that resistor until I need it. Because there's two pieces of paper here with glue holding them together, that means if I just pull out this wire there will be a little bit of glue left in the bottom of the resistor. I don't like to do that. So I'm just going to, I'm going to cut the leads off anyway. I'll just snip the ends of the wire, leave little nubs in the paper, and now I've got a 1K resistor with clean wires on it. Just bend them tight against the body of the resistor. I read them from left to right. So I'm going to mount the components facing left to right. Otherwise the electrons will have to go backwards. And that, that probably is not good for your efficiency. Just drop it in the right holes and bend it apart. These little metal blocks and these clamping nylon screws give me plenty of room for the wires to live under there while I stick the next one in. These blocks are made by Q 
QRP me, not to be confused with QRP labs. At this point, I've inserted all of the uh, all nine of the resistors supplied with the kit. I don't like to insert normally as many parts as this. It looks like a jungle. I thought maybe I'd do all the resistors. I have a Heiko soldering iron in the same solder that I used in uh, the first part. Not included in the kit is this 14 pin socket. I believe they intend that this integrated circuit be soldered directly to the board. We're not talking about RF here. We're talking about a one pulse per second and maybe 14 kilohertz data. And although I only need four of these pins, uh, they did not include any pin headers. So I had these in inventory and the sockets. I've gotten to the point where I prefer sockets for my integrated circuits. When the components got too high um, for being held up this far off the table, I, had, I reversed the position so that now that thing is spaced off the table by these. So I think I have everything done. Uh, I'm a little bit not upset. This is a better, easier to put together kit, better made kit than most I've seen. On the uh, clock, which these four pins will mate with, the silk screen includes the information about what the pins are for. I had to supply the pins and I had to supply the uh, optional plug socket. The antenna itself is this plate, or perhaps it's a silk screen, a metalized printing. And see those two notches there and there? They are tuning notches to tune this plate when mated with this ground plane to the desired frequency. So even though this antenna is spaced this far above the ground plane, this is a ground plane, that's the antenna. It's a good old flat top antenna just like they would have used it 160 kilohertz. I have to plug this in and uh, oh, I did not install the LEDs because I hope you'll see in a later issue why. They were to be installed mounted here. because the board has to sit this way in order that it can receive information. And the three LEDs need to be visible from this side. All in all, I would say that this kit and the clock kit, there it is, if you can follow instructions about as well as the average family dog, and you can read at the four-year four college level, Unfortunately, today's four-year college level doesn't mean reading comprehension is very well developed. But if, if you can pay attention as good as your dog, read as well as your medical doctor, since you don't have to write, this kit can be put together very easily with a set of tweezers, a set of nippers, Set along those pliers, 
and a soldering tool. There's lots of videos on YouTube showing how to solder. And I should say saw, I can't. I know there's an L in solder, but I've never pronounced it. The third part of the kit will be mounting this clock to the front panel and then wiring it to the back panel as well as making a four pin header to connect these four this set of four pins to this set of four pins as always when you're watching a YouTube video somewhere in it while you're playing it click the thumbs up button I hope you've enjoyed this kind of stuff uh, thanks